Hello students, this is chapter number 1, class 7th, Science, Nutrition and Plants, lecture number 2. In this video, we will be covering topics number 1, green leaves, number 2, stomata, number 3, heterotropic mode of nutrition in plants. These topics are in continuation to the topics we did in lecture number 1 of the same chapter. Let us first of all look at green leaves. You all know green leaves are the food factories of plants. Photosynthesis occurs in green parts of the plants, mainly in the leaves. The structure of the leaf shows following features that make it suitable place to carry out photosynthesis efficiently. Number one, The leaves are flattened to have large surface area to obtain maximum sunlight. Number two, they are thin to allow sunlight to reach to all the cells of leaf. Number three, they have large air spaces between the cells to allow carbon dioxide to enter. Number four, leaves have a network of xylem vessels that run through their veins. They supply water to all these cells for photosynthesis. Point number five, leaves have stomata through which carbon dioxide enters the leaves. Now, let us learn about stomata. All right, so first of all, let us see what is stomata. The stomata are the pores found in the epidermis of leaves, stems and other organs that facilitates gas exchange in plants. The pores are bordered by a pair of specialized cells known as guard cells that are responsible for regulating the size of the stomatal opening. Let us now learn the functioning that is opening and closing of stomata. The singular form of stomata is called stoma. Each stoma is guarded by two kidney-shaped guard cells. At the time of photosynthesis, stomata opens by the swelling of these guard cells and let the carbon dioxide from atmosphere enter the leaf and side by side releases oxygen formed during Photosynthesis. Through this diagram, you can have a look at open stomata and the closed stomata. Carbon dioxide from atmosphere is getting in, whereas oxygen and water molecule are releasing out.
at night when photosynthesis does not occur. Stomata get closed by shrinking of guard cells leaving a slit between them to expel carbon dioxide formed during respiration. We can clearly see during day stoma open as both the processes photosynthesis as well as respiration takes place whereas during night stoma closes as just respiration takes place you can clearly see the swelling and shrinking of the guard cells do you know algae algae are green in color as they contain chlorophyll which gives them the green color algae can also prepare their food by the process called photosynthesis let us now look at the heterotropic mode of nutrition in plants non green plants like fungi some bacteria and some flowering plants are without chlorophyll they cannot synthesize their food by photosynthesis like animals they depend on green plants for their food heterotrophic nutrition heterotrophs are the organisms be it plants or animals which cannot manufacture their food and derive it from green plants or other animals their mode of nutrition is called heterotrophic nutrition let us now learn about the different types of heterotrophic plants based on the method of obtaining food heterotrophic plants may be parasitic plants saprophytes plants symbiotic plants insectivorous plants number 1 parasitic plants non green plants that obtain their food from some other green plants are called parasitic plants the plant that provides food is called the host plant the parasitic plants absorb food from the root or the stem of host plant types of parasitic plants based on the dependency of these plants on the host they can be categorized into two number 1 total parasitic they completely depend on the host plant for their food number 2 partial parasitic they can synthesize their food but depend on the host plant for water and minerals let's have few examples of parasitic plant the first category total parasitic examples dodder cascuta or apodenthes example of partial parasites mistletoe is a partial parasite on mango and mahua plant
Number two, saprophytes. The non-green plants which obtain their food from dead and decaying plants and animals are called saprophytes. They release digestive enzymes on the decaying matter or animal excreta. Excreta is the waste product which an organism throw out or get rid of their body. These digestive enzymes break down the complex compounds into simple ones. These simple compounds are then absorbed by the saprophytes. Few examples fungi such as molds and mushrooms are the common saprophytes. Number three, symbiotic plants. When two organisms live together and share shelter and nutrients, their association is called symbiosis or symbiotic relationship and the organisms are called symbionants. They mutually help each other. Let us look at few examples. Number one, lichen. Lichens are symbiotic organisms in which an alga and a fungus live together and derive nutrients from each other. The alga is green and autotroph. It makes food for both by the process photosynthesis. The fungus provides shelter, water and minerals to alga for preparing food. Example number 2. Roots of leguminous plants. Few examples of leguminous plants are gram, moong, urad, peas, beans, etc. have nodules. A bacterium called rhizobium lives in these nodules and convert atmospheric nitrogen into soluble nitrates. These nitrogenous compounds are used by leguminous plants. Rhizobium cannot make its food. It gets its food from the plant. From this diagram, you can see nitrogen from air is taken by the rhizobium which are present in the nodules of leguminous plant. Rhizobium supply the nitrogenous compounds to the plant whereas the plants supply the photosynthesis product to the bacterium. Hence, leguminous plants and rhizobium have a symbiotic relationship. Point number four, insectivorous plants. Insectivorous plants are green plants. They can make their food by photosynthesis, but trap and digest insects to meet their nitrogen requirements. 
These plants grow in nitrogen deficient soil and have devices to trap insects. Few examples of insectivorous plants are number one, pitcher plant. The pitcher like structure is the modified part of the leaf. The apex of the leaf forms a lid which can open and close the mouth of the pitcher. Inside the pitcher, there are hair which are directed downwards. When an insect visits the pitcher for nectar, the lid closes and the trapped insect gets entangled into the hair. The insect is digested by the digestive juices secreted in the pitcher. So this is the pitcher plant. You can see the shape as well as the lid at the top. An example Venus fly trap. You can see clearly that these structure get closes when any fly gets trapped. Third example sun dew. This plant is also an insectivorous plant. At this we come to the end of lecture number 2. It's your turn to do the homework now. The first set of questions is of multiple choice. In these questions you have to select the most appropriate option as per the question asked. Question number one. Amar Bale is an example of A. Seprotrops B. Autotrops C. Parasites and D. Host Question number two. The plant which traps and feeds on insect is Option A. Cascuta, Option B, China Rose, Option C, Pitcher Plant, Option D, Rose. Question number 3. In lichens, Dash and Dash live in symbiotic association. Question number four. During photosynthesis, plants take in dash and release dash. In question three and four, two blanks are given in each of them. You have to choose the correct word. Question number five. How is rhizobium important for leguminous plants? Question number 6 Name the following Number 1 A parasitic plant with yellow, slender and tubular stem Number two, a plant that has both autotropic and heterotropic mode of nutrition. 